Okay, time for another concert, a uh, post-concert vlog. Um, the day prior to my recording this, I went to see Electric Light Orchestra, or rather, as of this point, it is known as Jeff Lynn's Electric Light Orchestra, or Jeff Lynn's ELO, at the Moda Center in Portland, Oregon. Uh, that was a heck of a show. Um, I have been to what I guess would just you describe as a arena rock show previously having been to see, for example, Trans-Siberian Orchestra, also at the Moda Center. Um, this instance, I'd say, one, I had better seats than I had at the uh, TSO show. Uh, my TSO tickets were on the wing of the stage, let's just say. Um, not the ideal view of the band, necessarily. Uh, but here, head on um, to the stage, not floor seats, but below the floor, but a little elevated, like uh, in the 200 section, which honestly, I'd say is probably like there are some 100 level seats that were closer, probably would have been better seats. But the 200 level was that had a nice, clear, unobstructed view of the stage um, while the still fairly distant from the band. Um, I could see the full stage set up. I could get the full impact of the laser light show everything there worked perfectly so with that in mind uh how was the experience well first off i do need to mention there was a opening act a band by the name of and i made sure to make a note of it because they were actually a pretty decent opening ba act band uh rooney a band from southern california and they were all right actually um, I would definitely say that it's that all things considered, like I've, I, I've been to concerts with opening act bands before, um, star chaser, I believe I remember correctly was the opening band for band made. And then when I went to see iron maiden, they had dream theaters an opening act and I'll say of the three of those, like the audience was definitely much more actively into Dream Theater. Um, and Star Chaser, the small size of the venue there, because that was that was Crystal Ballroom, helped, but also like they had some songs in there because that the, the audience did know, particularly helped by the fact that they had done a cover of Pet Cemetery for the Pet Cemetery remake. The audience all knew it and that helped kind of get the audience pumped up. Um, but stylistically, Rooney's kind of close to um, a little a little close to ELO, but not exactly in the sense that like the way I'd put it is <clears throat> they fit very much into that trying to lean into the 1970s British invasion um Brit pop style to an extent where like if Rooney ended up getting like the way I'd put it is they're like good Weezer is, is the way I describe it not like or not the good Weezer but like Actually, good Weezer is the bad term for it because I'm not familiar enough with Weezer to say. And also, like people have different opinions of win of good Weezer. Um, but like it definitely feels like it fits in with like a weight like with Blur, not actually, not actually Blur, but like that chunk of Britpop in the '90s that was very much going okay. Let's go back to the British and to a certain degree of British invasion sound of like. Two guitars, a bass, and uh, uh, and drums kind of set up. And just stick with that. And that's kind of what we had there with with Rooney. They do have a keyboardist, though, which, like, that's probably the closest to get to kind of leaning a bit in the ELO direction. Um, not as large a sound as ELO, necessarily. Um, ELO 
by the nature of involving strings and also for that matter actual like brass in the earlier albums um has like deliberately trying to build a big sound sound like like an electric light orchestra not um not electric light uh chamber um quartet not not electric light chamber music electric light orchestra is being put it um and they were all right they were fine um definitely got a sense from it of like i enjoyed it and i no one else in my section of the of the concert knew their stuff but i but they they were also into it and definitely it gave me a sense of i'm going to take the opportunity later to uh put their music on my like go into apple go into apple music on my phone and just kind of go through their just crawl through their discography a little bit and see what i like for as far as the full albums um and we'll see how that goes so like hey if you're an opening act and what you want to do is to get people to listen to your music and check out your stuff later and maybe see you when they you're playing not supporting another band congratulations rooney you have a comp mission accomplished as far as ELO itself goes, and that part, the later part of the show. Um, first off, since this is going to be where I'm going to have picture or a picture or pictures throughout this, and definitely at the ending credits. Um, really great stage show. Um, uh, really like, interesting, engaging on screen graphics. Um, haven't been to a concert that does laser stuff before, so that was cool. Um, I will definitely say if you are photo sensitive or have issues with uh, smoke machines, uh, this concert is not for you. Um, the smoke machines are kind of needed by necessity for the big laser stuff, but um, otherwise, like yeah, and also the laser stuff and also like some light, some general light effect stuff. So that's not gonna fly as so. Not having the smoke doesn't make that work. So. You're, you're kind of out of luck if you do that, if you go to see the show, go to see the show live. Um, I definitely get coming out of the concert that why Jeff Lynn is like, this is the, this is the year, this is my last tour. I'm going to retire from touring after this. I uh, like, and he personally had a little bit of a rough start starting the concert. Um, like a little bit of stumbling during evil woman a little bit of stumbling during the the during the first verse of do ya which like particularly during the patter parts you know the in this life i've seen everything i can see one of i've and goes on from there um that bit like i understand like that that bit is still deliberately not melodic for the verse and then the chorus and the later verse and the later verses going onwards get into more of a melodic rhythm. But that first verse is kind of a little like deliberately uneven. And um so I get him him stumbling a bit there. Like whenever things get more melodic, really solid. Um Like the the part the one the, the one song here that I hadn't actually heard, and that's because I haven't listened to the Xanatu soundtrack. I know I'm a terrible ELO fan. Um, was all over the world from uh, Xanadu. Like that one came up said I came up with like, is that from the like one of the, like the two new albums that I hadn't listened to that much? No, it's it's from the soundtrack of Xanadu, and I haven't watched that movie, and I haven't listened to the soundtrack, so I <clears throat> didn't recognize it. Oh uh, well, so. Anyway, uh, so there's that, that, um, speaking of which in between, uh, the opening act and the concert proper starting, we got played a selection of tracks by artists who, uh, Jeff Lynn had collaborated with specifically former, like, or deceased, I should say deceased traveling Wilburys. Um, so a little bit, like, I kind of hoped we might've been, might have dropped a little bit of Olivia Newton-John in there just because she is sadly no longer with us and 
ELO did collaborate with them with her during um, on the Xanadu soundtrack, but no such luck. Anyway, so as far as the like the concerts, the rest of the concert cell was really good. Um, it is worth noting that uh, of the original members of of Electric Light Orchestra, it's basically just Jeff Lynn at this point. So a lot of these guys are like generally session musicians or um, that sort of thing. I'm going to double check. By the way, also, if you're in the clicking, that is a new, my new keyboard. Um, I'll have just more time with it. I will give for talk, talk a bit about it because it is the uh, 8 bit dough keyboard. Um, yeah, like, so like the, the two like, main recurring members are, are like, existent members i guess i would say would be uh like up in like yeah like jeff lynn's the last one left um like richard tandy had was the the last major active member of the of the earlier band um and he like retired from touring around 2017 and then had passed away earlier this year so he's kind of out um like basically just jeff lynn's kind of all that's left so and like for and for the last couple albums um he did much of the instrumentation for it so that that very much makes sense um once again for where why he's retiring right this is the last ELO tour or at least Jeff Lynn's ELO tour um the set list that we like have is really solid I appreciate them putting the set list on Apple Music I will put a link in the deeply do for where you can listen where you can find it and listen to it if you wish to is it's not exactly in order um so and also there's a couple tracks in there that aren't in the actual performance um at our concert they dropped twilight and they dropped calling america and they shuffled a few things around like showdown was a little bit later in the set like um after uh 10 5 through um the i never know what to actually call like how to actually read out the number part of this uh, or the the one zero five three eight overture. I never, I never know how to really pre- properly read out that song title. Um, like if it was if it was like the ten fifty three or overture, sure. If it was the if it had one more digit, like the ten fifty three eighty six overture, I'm all for it. Um, but the ten five thirty eight overture, anyway. And it's a good song. I love it, but it's weird and tricky to read off the name for it. Uh, like performances for all these are great. Um, the back, the backing vocalists they have for the tour are also excellent as well. Um, did not take any notes during the concert, so I do not know who they're set, who the uh, female vocalist they have for the tour is, but she is excellent, uh, especially for like. As, Rock Air rock, rock Aria is on the set list, and she does a really great job on that. Um, along with a bunch of the other um parts where female vocals come in to the concert. Um so or on the song, so excellent. Um Can't Get It Out of My Head is one of the songs that I don't listen to as much um like i've mainly heard it at every album it's on um the, the listing on the playlist is the from the, the single version um and so I'm trying to remember which album that's on so i'm like really quickly clicking through the discography i was like there, there was like pretty much like there's not representation of every album on here, 
Um, there isn't anything from ELO 2. Um, there isn't anything from ELO 3. I can't get it out of my head. That's from Eldorado. Okay, so like nothing from ELO 2 and 3. But we got um, can't get it out of my head from Eldorado. We have Fire on High and Evil Woman and Strange Magic from um, Face the Music. We have uh, Telephone Line and Rock Aria and Living Thing and Do Ya from New World Record. Uh, from Out of the Blue, we got uh, Sweet Talking Woman, uh, Turn to Stone, and of course, Mr. Blue Sky. Um, like, probably the songs that like, we didn't get that I wish we had, um, as far as like that, but were, that weren't even like on the planned set list. Is I like Summer and Lightning um, off of Out of the Blue a lot, and I wish that had been on there. In any case, we have um, off of just it got basically like pretty much. We would have had, if we had Twilight. We would have um, we would have had something from there. Um, nothing from Secret Messages, though, from what I understand from the production, how that went. While the more recent like Record Store Day release um, more reflects what Jeff Lynn's preferred version is what uh was um and uh but i could definitely get why he's like ah, this isn't, i'm not so, i'm not that invested in this album um so i understand why that one was on there uh i liked balance of power and calling america would, would have given us something off of that but uh nothing nothing off of zoom but i could kind of get that to a degree like i don't know like don't know if that's a like I I don't know how much Jeff Lynn is like yeah this is this 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 album is my like one I'm really attached to necessarily like one of the few songs that I liked like um I like Stranger in a Quiet Street and Easy Money but uh, nothing really otherwise from there um and I haven't really gotten that much attached to Alone in the Universe and um from out of nowhere yet uh, but admittedly i haven't listened to them that much regularly so this this definitely feels like one of the things like if i listen to them more often i gotta get find find something on there that i grab on to um to attach to, to get attached to um but anyway um like if you're right for your your last big tour before you go out um a certain degree of, of play the hits real works really works and um like one more time was off of the last album from from out of nowhere so like all things considered um like saying that that tour didn't happen um because of the pandemic like getting the chance to do that material uh any material from that album live since uh the other one their other tour was 2019 for alone in the universe um so like getting a chance to have some some stuff off of that album there is, is nice um but otherwise like i really good set like my one gripe my one like gripe that i feel like i, I need to mention that isn't a well Jeff Lynn's getting older. It understands where he, he can't necessarily be like a very active dynamic performer on stage. So it sounds like he's never really was that kind of guy. Um, is some of the screen graphics um, for a couple songs. Okay, one song definitely. Um, and that's for Last Train to London on-screen graphic is on-screen graphics are a series of images that are that look strongly like they are generated by AI I this is the main evidence I have for this is how text in the images is depicted uh, it looks like 
they basically put Last Train to London, the song title, and then maybe some stylistic notes into Mid Journey or similar AI image generation software and grabbed more or less 100 images or not 100, like several hundred or possibly even a thousand images for the purposes of having it morph between them over the course of the performance. Now I did some checking. I, I did this have like a previous screen video or something like that, or to edit out my typing. Uh, it sounded like there was an official video. I There may or may not have been like, I've heard that there were animated videos that were made for one of the, um, uh, like, like a DVD or something like that for one of their movie for one, for one of their like concert releases. And I don't know, um, if there is the, like what it looks like or anything like that. If there, like, if there is, um, like that would've been great. Or if we'd gotten something like, um, like stock footage of trains from the seventies. That would have been great too, but that's not what we got. Um, and that made it a little rough to watch because like, like, okay, I'm just going to focus my attention on the stage now, like on the, on the bands. Cause like, I'm not a, like, I, I don't like AI art, not just from like a, not just from, from the sense of this is art. Like th these algorithms are, the software is trained by stealing the work of artists, artists who should be co fairly compensated for their work, but also in the sense of it generally doesn't often look great. And with Last Train to London in particular, it really shows because of when the text shows up. It'd be one thing if all the text, if they like managed to get all the text for all these to say London on the trains or on the the, the, the signage for the stations or that sort of thing. If they'd gone and photoshopped in and like figure out what their font they were using and put in London there to make it consistent and fit with, further with the lyrics of the song, but no, having it be the AI, like the bad clunky text thing, it just like, oh, it, it was disappointing. It was also only one song. The rest of the concert was excellent. There may have been other bits of AI stuff that came up later, um, but I didn't notice it. I was paying attention more to the band and the performance and everything else. It was that particular song at that moment that threw me out of the concert or that threw me out of the moment and made me aware. I don't know whose idea that was. Um, otherwise, though, great, great concert, great performance. Really liked it. This is ELO's last tour. I mentioned this earlier. This, this is their last hurrah. There will hopefully be other concerts in the, in the tour coming up by the time this video goes live. So if there is a concert near you that you, like, that there are tickets available for, that there are seats available for, even if, like, you and your buddy can't sit next to each other, I do recommend you go. ELO is an excellent band. Their work is incredibly, the, the work that Jeff Lynn has put into all these various pieces of music over the years is tremendously strong. Um, to the point, that, and seeing this concert and getting to hear these songs with a large audience of people and having them react and sing along and that sort of thing, like, had me go like this 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 is great like going to a tribute band an elo tribute band won't be the same experience but i'd be willing to do that if it gives me something close because these songs really like do ya shine a little love um um evil woman so many of the songs in this concert um don't bring me down. They have a real, get a real, like, 
they're, they're, they're great on their own and they're great singing along with them in the car or listening to them on the radio or on an album is excellent but hearing them live hearing a action hearing the the the, the vocalist sing the op, the operatic section of La, of rock area live is something special and i definitely recommend that if you enjoyed elo's music at all you definitely take advantage of the opportunity to see them live while you still while you still can Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. I also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.